Hello and welcome to Nobody Needs Somebody, the podcast where two comedians who are currently nobody meet somebody who is famous. My name is Mary Picarazzi. And I'm Tanvir Arora. In today's episode, we got to talk with Sandeep Fadik. He is a writer, director, actor, and producer of comedy. You may know him from Comedy Central's The Legend of Neil, New Girl, Glitch Text on Netflix, Community, or my personal favorite, The Guilt. I'm, I'm super excited to geek out. I am super excited as well. Let's not waste any time. Let's talk with Sandeep. Welcome, Sandeep. How are you? Oh, man, I'm fantastic. I am fantastic. I love uh, I love you guys. I just love you. That's it. That's it. <laughs> really? Oh, wait, wait till you get to know, know us better. Then you'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait till the interview goes through. Yeah. I love the idea, I love the idea of you. How about that? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, in theory, everyone that. loves us, yes. Yes, in theory, until they have to do an interview. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, well, we're going to have some fun questions. As always, I have my handy dandy shiny red hot. Tanvir, what do you have? I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max to read right. from. <laughs> okay. That's a weird humble brag, but all right, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> all right, I'm going to kick off. I'm going to kick off first. Uh, ooh, Okay. Uh, do you get any royalties from any of the Guild songs? Uh, for those of y'all that know, uh, with the Guild, you had Game On, Do You Want to Date My Avatar, et cetera. Do you still get any money from that? Oh, my gosh. Great question. Do I? <laughs> or did you ever? <laughs> should I? Should I? Um, you should. Is this I, a Taylor Swift? Oh, my God. Re-record them. I think we – I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we occasionally will get – I, they definitely don't parse it out by like where it comes from, but we do still get some really, you know, like, let's put it this way. We can get a couple new pillows a year, um, <laughs> maybe even a blanket sometimes. Um, but yeah, modest, you know, there's some modest uh, back end. But I, I don't know if it comes from the, <laughs> I don't know if it comes from the videos or not. Um, what I, I mean, get, those are, those should be what I get in residuals is the love of the, like the I, I call myself fight club famous where like if you're in the know you know and uh it's few and far between but it's lovely when they have it. you'll be randomly at like line in disneyland or something like that and someone will be like hey man really love the guild <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly <laughs> that voice <laughs> exactly that voice or like one time it happened at airport, airport security very very fast story oh. which is just uh airport security now imagine you're a brown man in your yeah. airport security and then the tsa guy is like all right this whole line has to go over here. Everybody move over there except you and points out <laughs> right at me. And I'm like, oh. this is in New Hampshire too, where I'm from. Like, this old, like And I was like, oh, great. Oh, you geez. know, there's not very many brown people in New Hampshire. They want to like, they want to feel my butt. I assume <laughs> I'll do something weird. I don't know. And so I was freaked out. And then it, and he's like, you come here. And he like brings me to the front of the line. He's like, you can go through, man. I love the guild. Uh, oh! <laughs> yeah, I get cut oh. to the end of the line. I was like, that one was time you could have drugs on you, man. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I could have been a mule. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was great. That, that That's the residuals I get, and I love. Nice. That's a great story, though. Yeah. That was good. All right. You know, you and I just talked a little bit before we started recording about social media, and uh, you weren't a big fan of it. But how has social media like changed your approach to comedy? Well, I mean, it's uh, that's a great question, too. Good job, two for two, guys. Um, I think uh, it's it's what, what's what the beauty of social media, because a lot is said about how awful it is, and I think it is can be very awful. And let's just say I have a small child that I'm mm -hmm. raising, and I do not want that child on social media anytime soon. Um, that said, as a comedian, to be able to utilize it as a tool to reach people has been pretty remarkable. Right. I sort of stayed away from it for a while. I, I dabbled with it for a while and didn't want to get lost in it. But lately, since doing stand up, I've been utilizing I think stand up is having a moment on social media. Yeah. It's just like bite sized, easy to consume entertainment. And I'm loving really? doing stand up. So, in that sense, I'm realizing, oh, this is just a huge opportunity to reach a bunch of people that 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 would love, you know, my jokes and my stories and stuff like that. So like that, that is that has been great. I mean, Instagram has been it's how it le led me to you guys, right? Like in, right. in this 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 fun podcast. So um, in that and like I was telling uh, Thunvi earlier that 
we <laughs> Padma uh, Padma Lakshmi, um, you know, commented on one of my videos. She, she's she's really pretty you guys <laughs> she, she, she really pretty uh and you know i get this event like that's so cool like how who, when is that ever going to happen in the real world if i'm just doing stand-up Pro probably you know a lot less frequently than i would like <laughs> so that's been that's been pretty great you know it's 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 a great discovery tool to and especially for me who's i've done stuff for years and years, you know, like the guild was freaking 2011, I think was the last time we shot the guild. Um, that was, that's a, that's a millennia ago for Gen Z. So like to find old fans, to reconnect with people that, you know, uh, really love the stuff that I produced in the past, like that's been really wonderful. Nice. Um, so I, I, and I'll say this, I'm loving discord. I gotta tell you, I was a skeptic. I was like, I don't want to sign up for another dumb thing how dare you and yeah. now i'm like it's my favorite place to hang out because i'm just hanging out with my fans and friends and f funny people uh in discord and it's like it's like my own little personal uh twitter you know without right. all the toxicity and grossness it's just like it's like well, a, it kind of, a happy fun place to hang it's like a, it's like a little meet and greet when you think about it it kind of takes yeah. away all the things that people usually can't do i mean we we obviously doing stand up, we're hearing people who are like 40 and 45, like this is the first time they've ever been to a show. Like they've never yeah. even conceived of going to a show. Yeah. So I think that's what exactly what social media is doing for that moment that we're having I'm right sorry. now is like, oh, this is a thing we can go, we can go watch. I'm like, yes, it's, please it's, come out. I love that point, Mary. It's like, it's making it more accessible for people who didn't, weren't, weren't yeah. previously able for whatever reason to get out to these yep. and to see this comedy, to see these points of view, to see these perspectives. I'm, t I'm talking a lot about my sort of identity crisis as an Indian American and feeling like I've lived between these two worlds and I know I'm not at, at, at home nowhere. And just saying it out loud and, and putting in my comedy and having people react to it and uh, say, yeah, me too. Oh my gosh. Like that is, that is so healing and and uh fun i just can't you know like i feel like that that connection is making me feel more at home in my own in my own skin and uh so that that's that kind of stuff is priceless that's mm -hmm. awesome uh oh this is a good one uh so when is desi quest coming out okay thanks for asking um no no that's great um so <laughs> Uh, I want what I want to say is, you guys should go to desiquest.com and put in your email and join our mailing list because you'll get the latest and greatest information on this. W absolutely love it. I cannot wait for the world to see this project. I am just like, I, trust me, I want it to come out to the world as much as anybody else that's interested in seeing it. But we are just making sure that we're going to make the best thing possible. So, we, so for people who don't know, DesiQuest uh, is a project that we kickstarted. It's a it's a Dungeons and Dragons uh based kind of show uh so a lot of people don't even know what this format is it's called an actual play where people play a tabletop role-playing game like pathfinder or dungeons and dragons or these you know long-standing okay. rpgs role-playing games right and you f basically film them playing that that and they play in character it's like this long form improv it's this really cool hybrid format it's long form improv slash kind of unscripted show um but it's just uh, as a, as a vehicle to explore a culture that's what we that's what we decided to do with it we decided to create a south asian mythology behind it jasmine buller uh who's at the, that bronze girl everywhere she's amazing if you're not following her and you're interested in this space at all you should be she was our dungeon master she created this whole sort of south asian mythological inspired universe that right. we can then play um you know an rpg within and we had this incredible cast anjali bamani um reka shankar and omar najam and myself and it was just honestly one of the best things i've ever like one of the most emotional experiences I've ever had on camera just to be at a table of all south asians and do something that was creative comedic dramatic all mixed together and in high fantasy which you never get to do like it was just the fucking coolest thing um so <laughs> I really hope that people, so to answer your question and not really answer your question <laughs> is, we are in post-production right now. We're just okay. trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. We're, we're hoping that it'll be, it'll def, like, I, I don't want to say definitely anything. Our, we're gunning for obviously um, end of summer, early fall. That's kind of like where it's, but look, we're, we're a low budget um, 
situation we raised you know 150k on kickstarter which sounds like a lot but gets you like seven muffins in hollywood so <laughs> it's not as much as you think um typically shows like this run 2x 3x that budget if not more so okay. we are working on a shoestring it's just a passion project all the way through and through and everyone and we got like the perf like mo you know most seasoned editors in this space to be working on a show because they believe in it, but they're working at it for rates where they have to do other work as well. So we're just dealing with moving schedules and yeah. trying to, uh, to, to find the right window. We're, but we're pushing ahead, making the best possible show for our, for our Kickstarter uh, backers and for our, what we believe will be our future throngs of fans. <laughs> but that's it. These are the, these are the moments that actually like, this is where you get your cult classics. This is where people start. They, they're in it because they're not in it for the budget. They're in it for the story. And anybody mm -hmm. who's ever played D and D your dungeon master can make or break your game. Like it makes or breaks the entire rhythm of what you're doing. <laughs> Let me just say, I don't, I listen, I haven't done a lot of long form D and D I've done quite a bit and I've had a few amazing DMS. Um, Jasmine is uh, on another planet, I think. Um, so I cannot wait for people to see not just like her, she's already someone who's ex like exhibited her incredible skill on dimension 20 and, 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 and all these other spots. But when you see her in her world that she just like the blood, sweat, and tears are every bit of her DNA went into the DNA of this universe. Like, I think it's just, um, I can't wait. I think it's just absolutely That's exciting. Awesome. Yeah. That's exciting. Because this is taking off again. This is not D and D is and and magic and all these things are not like hidden in your basement anymore. These are mainstream. No. It's having a moment. And it's having a moment because I believe that like it does. D what what TTRPGs do is what we want out of any good story, which is ultimately to situate you in a universe, make you feel like you're dropped in, you're in the perspective, and you are connected to these characters. It does that in a way, in, in a format that I think is un, unrivaled, and that's why people are really connected. I've never cried doing improv before. That has never happened. I've done 20 years of improv at on the biggest stages, Groundlings, UCB, you name it. I've never cried. <laughs> like sincerely in this show i'm just saying there were tears and wow. i don't wow. i i think that D, &D is really the type or ttrpgs -T 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 like that format it really lends itself to it because you really immerse yourself in this character and you're living instead of when you do a normal improv show you're doing like 15 20 characters maybe sometimes in 20 minutes in here right. you're living as this character inevitably by episode three someone's going to ask you like hey where's your family in all this like why why are why are you as this character fighting for what you're fighting for? Why do you why are you adventuring? What do you what's your purpose? And like you have to come up with some answers. You got to yes and and figure out a way to and then yep. and, and then you start believing those. You're like yeah I, I'm fighting for this kid that that I that that is you know uh, whatever it is whatever whatever you're yeah <laughs> and you start living in this world and and I think that it brings out emotions. So then eventually when you're fighting these big bosses, you're like shit I'm fighting for my family. <laughs> you know yeah. like and and it, and and so I think that's why people connect with shows yeah. like this more, more, more and more. You're seeing, you're seeing um, the popularity of these shows skyrocket. It's because people are ha they're feeling the emotional roller coaster mm -hmm. exactly. um, that you want to feel when you are told a great story. But they're doing that because the the characters in it are they're believing that truth. They really truly are yeah. embodying it. So it makes it so easy as a viewer to fall to fall in with that story. And then what? What's going on next? And so, it's still fun and funny and silly. Like that's the beauty too. It's 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 not all awesome. just like all the drama. You can break out a character. Just be yourself. Ask questions about how how the format works. Like. That I'm like relatively new, so I was able to be like, "Yo, I don't get this." Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, what's this mechanic? And then like, just so why people? Why do people love podcasts? Why do people love you know any sort of reality stuff? It's just people just being themselves and being right. real. So you're kind of like both, and you're you're having this parasocial thing where you are. I'm just being myself with my pals Anjali and Omar, and everybody's loving that chemistry probably because mm -hmm. we love that chemistry. And then also dropping into this like emotional, interesting story high fantasy story so you're kind of getting the best of that's both those worlds that's nice. why i think that that format's uh, killing it well, i'm super excited for it definitely so we the, yeah we put the website out there desiquest.com hit it up for all the latest details yes all right um uh, i'm gonna combine two questions maybe they go hand in hand do you have a hidden talent and what's next on your bucket list I think people have seen probably I, I used to be a gymnast so like 
Seen, I, I, I've done some backflips on music videos for the guild and I'll occasionally do handstand contests at conventions. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. You have some room behind you, right? Amazing. What's that? You do have some room behind you, right? Can you show us? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm also very stretched out right now. Um, I mean, I can. I fucking can. Wow. Oh, Mary, what do you say? Yeah. Why, why I was I aggressive. I was I, mean, I was giving you an out and you came back with I fucking can't. I'll, I'll give you a I'll give you a handstand if you want a handstand. I'll, I I it won't be hidden anymore as a talent, but I'll give you a handstand if you want. Oh, you uh, your face. <laughs> yeah, and then uh we we'll do it at the very end. Um and uh, then uh what was the second question? Bucket uh, list? Yeah, next thing on your bucket list. Um to uh I let's see, next thing on my bucket list is more travel. I want to go to Japan and Greece. Nice. Oh, All right. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. With any any particular of it family? Yeah. With my with my little guy and okay. my wife. I okay. like them both. It's, it's <laughs> the best cool. traveling. Traveling with the little is the best. My daughter, we started traveling with her at six months. She's almost nine now. I absolutely love traveling with her. It's you amazing to see it. Just, you just get to experience the whole world again as this like observer. But like yep. through their eyes at the same, it's just the coolest thing. It is. It is. It gets better <laughs> the it. older they get. <laughs> I love it and I love it. Yeah. Uh, you talked about doing cons. I know that you're all over with that. Where is, what is the weirdest fan encounter you've had? I'm sure some people haven't been cool like us. So, um, fans are mostly cool. Uh, <laughs> And, and weird could be synonymous with more like odd, like something like, huh, I wasn't expecting that from said person. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, uh, so the the one that I, I tend to bring up, I'm trying to think if there's a different one than the one I've already said, but this one guy was like, uh, you know, he he wanted to get a photo together and he was like, can I, um, I hope this isn't strange to Ash, but I can, can I, can I carry you? Can I like hold you like a baby? And I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. I, I maybe I wasn't drunk enough or something, but I, I just was like, yeah, no, I'm not feeling it. Because <laughs> no, it would be in that moment that he's caring. You have that moment of where I am I in my career? It would have been funny and fine. And may, I, honestly, catch me in the right mood. I would have been like, let's do it, pal. Um, <laughs> but for some reason, I, I just was like, nah. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, I'd say the word that, that wasn't even bad because then he was like, okay, no problem. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, and it was like, no, no, it's fine. It's just I don't feel like being carried right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know. Again, um, maybe <laughs> a few beers. Um, but, uh, the As worst opposed one, to the I, times. Remember, I remember the, the, one of the, one of the times that I was really like, this is early on, this is at a BlizzCon and I didn't really understand like the neck, the negative side of the parasocial relationship until this happened where I was just kind of like rushing to go to the bathroom. We had, we, this was like at the height of the guild we had at BlizzCon, which is like, the could there be any people. more concentrated place yep. of just our types of fans there you know like yeah. the home of world of warcraft right so like uh we had you know it was just end to end we were scheduled that could barely work in a bathroom break so i was running to get go to the bathroom uh it, for this like quick as quick as possible break we had this huge line and as i was running you know someone was like Zabu, oh, I want a picture with you. And I was like, yeah, I really have to pee. Please, there's a, there, the line's over there. I'll be back. And then he was like, oh, I see how it is. You think you're so fucking cool. And was like, oh, oh. fuck you. Like, he like, gave me this thing. And I just, it just like, it, it like made my heart drop, you know? And I was like, I don't have time to care that much because I have to pee. But like, it, you just realize the expectations some people have over yeah. like time and like you're just like dude i gotta pee like don't you ever have to pee like i just can't believe people have the audacity to flip on such a dime like that to be like i expect yeah. you to basically do whatever i want in this but like i get it like from the it's from the perspective of like oh how what, what's the big deal it's just a picture it takes two seconds but you gotta understand that like that two seconds is valuable when you are uh when your bladder is about to burst right <laughs> having some human empathy in that moment but people just see it as like oh you're too big for your own bre you breaches or whatever maybe um, yeah maybe the next time these two guys can actually put a diaper on you hold them hold, hold you in their arms and feed you beer perfect everybody wins right everyone wins look at yeah. that you are 
<laughs> you, you're a master negotiator. You I am. I want to be a pleaser. <laughs> yeah, I think if anyone can get in there and solve Israel versus Pakistan, it's you. Or, or Israel versus <laughs> Pakistan. Pakistan. Oh my God. I'm out. That's it. <laughs> I'm in Palestine. Oh gosh, I'm gonna get flamed for that. Mary, stop recording. That's it. <laughs> he, he is the safe word. That, 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 that was it. <laughs> Pakistan was the safe yeah. word. <laughs> I'm out, I'm out. Oh, well, let's go to a little different kind of question here. What's on your music playlist right now? What are you listening to? I am listening to a lot of kids' songs, um, but Yay. also a lot of cool songs. My my son is also cool. Um, so it's a great <laughs> combination of, he loves right now, uh, Led Zeppelin, nice. uh, the Lion King soundtrack, and Lisa Loeb's kids album, which is awesome. <laughs> wow, that's a. Has he not ventured into the Snoop Dogg kids album yet? He is not. Oh man, I'm gonna have to hit that up. Oh, uh, it's some. There are some bangers on that. I'm not gonna he lie. Loves it's drums, actually... and so he's really big into rhythm and drums. Yeah, and, that's uh, perfect then. So he like wants to find the rockinest, or like the best drum beats, um, for everything. So that's good. You gotta hit Snoop yeah. Dogg up. Uh, that's pretty. And then I'm, I'm a radio. I I can't not listen to Radiohead when I write. So that's I listen to a lot of Radiohead. There you go. That's what it is. All nice. Right. What's your favorite song? <sighs> um, I'm asking all the hard questions. Can you tell? Yeah, my favorite Radiohead song, or just favorite song period. Either I I just assumed it would be Radiohead. My bad. Um, airbag. I don't know. I like I like all of them. I just listen to them all in a. In a I like everything on OK Computer. I think is probably, probably my, the album that I go to the most. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah, because that's usually it. Like if you have certain albums that like you hit that right mood that gets you yeah. into the mindset of what you're looking, what you're trying to produce, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. I don't know. I I uh, I will just listen to Radiohead not like the whole all of it. So. Um, and I, sometimes I'm like, I don't even know which song that is. I don't, I'm not good at what song titles, but basically I start yeah. with OK Computer and just let Spotify do the rest. Just do its thing. That's yeah. it. Cool. All right. Um, is there a joke or any topic you would not touch in comedy in front of your family or just in general, like you don't want to talk about things, some sort of things? I love when public things ask me, what's the thing that you don't want to talk about in public? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's explore. Um, uh, so far, I haven't met something that I didn't want to find some kind of an angle on. I mean, there's some, there's like, you know, I don't know. I don't want to make people feel bad, <laughs> like in my family. I don't, I always try to at least tell a spin on it that I feel like that they will appreciate the the perspective rather than be like, oh, that's. That's me. Right. That hurts my feelings or anything like that. Like I'd rather, like I did my whole set in front of my parents for the first time recently at the comedy store, which was really funny and fun. And I called them out, and like the like the audience at the comedy store was loving it, uh, which was cool. They like they just loved that I called my parents out. I was like, because I couldn't help it. They're sitting. They put them right in the freaking front. They sat them right wow. in the front. So I'm just staring at my mom and dad while I'm telling these like jokes <laughs> about like being raised in their household, right? Um, and so I was like, it was great. I was like, I could be like, by the way, they're right here. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and the eyes were crazy for it, and uh, it, it made for a lot of good little in between material. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and they they were eating it up. They had a great time. So uh, you know, to me, uh, I I can't. I don't know what would be untouchable. Um, yeah. But you know, I try. I, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 what, what, the challenge that I've been recently trying to do is actually think of stuff that I feel like is untouchable, and then go like, what's my take on it? Like I just did. So some of the clips that you're about to see, and I'm, I'm not going to spoil much, but uh, on, on my Instagram coming out in the coming weeks is about the Hindu swastika, the swastik. Okay. I'm so interested in this, in how this symbol is, you know, this mollifying thing for the sure. world and yet like shows up at my cousin's baby shower yeah. <laughs> um, and just trying to reconcile with that. And so I wanted, so that's, that's something that I wanted to kind of like talk about. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 
That's good. Though, we, yeah, no, no, because we think about it culturally. Like I'm Mexican American, so like if I had my parents in the front row, I would be dying if I set, talked about any of any of my sex jokes or anything along those lines. That would be like I would die. I don't know, Tamir, you probably don't care, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, if your parents in the audience, I won't care. Yeah. No. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> Oh, it's Tanvir. I'm so sorry. I was calling you Tanvir. I, I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. My, my bad. Um, also, Tanvir is my cousin. So I was like, I just, okay. <laughs> got it, got we're married it. some more good cousins, man. We are. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we're related in some capacity. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh, that's right. Like, I, yeah, I wouldn't, you're right. I probably wouldn't go super hypersexual for my parents. Yeah. Like, like I got a solid cuckolding joke that I probably would. would, would <laughs> You're like, but it would hit so hard right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's relatable. Yeah. <laughs> thing about having immigrant parents, though, is that like, if you're not swearing in Hindi or Gujarati, like you kind of can get away with a lot because they get. I mean, not gonna know what cuckolding is, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> they just, they do that joke, and they would just be like, "Cool," like you just kind of wash over them. Yeah. And, you know, um yeah so have <laughs> <laughs> i translated that shit to draw the really? <laughs> that'd be great <laughs> what you got tender uh i got one more and then you can go um we have any pre-show routine like okay when i go on stage Panic. <laughs> i i do want to point out one thing though i definitely check my zipper that's one thing i definitely do <laughs> Uh, dude, that is that is a hundred percent. I so my my because I am terrible with zipping my fly. Ter- it's like it like people who know me, they are like it is like the classic like it's weird if my fly is not down at this point. Like, <laughs> like, on the fence, just like I don't know what it is. I cannot figure out like what part of the bathroom routine do I just why do I skip the fly zip up? I don't get it. So before I go up on stage, I check that shit like. 25 times and my wife like will text me and be like check your zipper check your zipper check your zipper uh, it hasn't happened yet it hasn't happened yet but it, i'm sure it's going to happen one of these Just days yeah mathematically speaking it has to you, what happen. you have to make sure is that what you're wearing underneath is profitable to where you can get an endorsement deal from them like it's be me yeah. or something so that's <laughs> turn it into an opportunity they should put their logo like right right in the, right in the power window <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we want to encourage people to leave it down, but it's in case you do, it's going to be the new hip thing. There you go. Leave the window open. Yeah. Uh, one of my second to last questions we have is what is the biggest misconception you had about Hollywood? You live out in the LA uh, area, right? Yeah. Um, that, oh man, let's see. Probably that, uh, I didn't understand what networking really meant. I thought I, what I realize now looking back, I've been here. So in in uh, December, it'll be my 20th year in, in LA, um, a score. I thought it was a lot more, you know, I thought it was all this schmoozing and it's kind of like the whole who, you know, mentality. Mm-hmm. It, it the, networking matters and who, you know, matters, but who do you authentically know? Right. I think that's the the piece that that is missing. It's not, it's it, it's not how many famous people are in your Rolodex. It's how many people are in your Rolodex that care about you, yeah, and that you care about. That you'll keep going back to when times are tough, when yeah. you know you're up against it, and that you could say, "Hey, man, income's really, really hurting right now. Do you guys got anything cooking over?" And and they won't be like, "Oh, well, you know," and won't be judgmental about that. You know, who are the people? that are in your monkey sphere that you, uh, you, you like I, I view, I now kind of view it as like, oh, it's almost like your graduating class. Like the people that you were in your improv class with, the people that you met in these early general meetings when you were meeting an assistant or uh, you know someone quote unquote low on the totem pole at a studio, like those are eventually gonna be the people that run these studios or the people exactly. that are gonna be you know, VPs of comedy at Fox and whatever else. So it's like, who do you really connect with? Like try to connect with them on, on a human level. And also it's okay if you don't connect because then they're not for you. And that's okay too, because there's fucking hot thousands of people here. You can't possibly have them all. So who really resonates with you too? Let it be self-sorting for yourself. Like you don't feel like you need to get 
this thing other than a real genuine human connection um, where you really start jiving with people and feeling like these are my these are my people so that you know because it, it is really a game of attrition out here it's like who, who kind of sticks around the longest and has the most I think genuine relationships are the ones that really um, you know succeed in in the way but you know you got to take you got to remove the lottery ticket winners out of it like there are yes there are of course yeah. the people that that hit it big and that's the stories you hear and that's the stuff that you're like well if i just only did what they did and it's like you can't yeah you can't follow that path you got like do what you can do every day like what's in your control and what's in your control is oh if you get a meeting like you know treat it as an opportunity to connect with a human being not as an opportunity to sell something or yeah. uh get somewhere or ladder climb or whatever treat it as an opportunity to vet is there a real relationship i can have with this person um yeah, yeah people first mentality people understand undersell that but i mean it's also kind of getting to the right flow of the energy flow i for me i strongly believe that where you're supposed to be will fit right it'll feel better it'll make sense so yeah. if you're with the right people and that this is where you're supposed to be right now and this is like this is where you make your future so that that's that's actually hard. goes a long it's way like, with us yeah i agree it's hard it's hard though and it's okay in those times when you're like when you fail at it too it's okay to fail at that that mentality and not beat yourself up for it if you don't always hit it <laughs> well yeah fail, i don't think failure is a thing anymore if i'm being honest like i i don't know i have a different mentality i think failure is just showing us like a different direction it's like okay let's, let's see what else i have this quote from elizabeth gilbert on my quote wall right now right because i'm that guy um failure has function failure has function it asks you if you want to keep making things nice so it's I an like opportunity to, to, to test your resolve. I love that. That's um, awesome. All right. <laughs> so we got very, we got very deep there guys. We, we yeah, don't normally do that. Uh, I do my handstand. We get out of here. Well, hold on. We do one more question. So our oh. last question that we do ask every guest, and we want to thank you so much for being on the show. Like I said, huge fan of you. I'm so grateful that you answered my uh, message. <laughs> uh, when yeah. someone Googles you, what do you want your autocomplete to be? Uh, that's a great question. I mostly don't want it to autocomplete some other Sundeep's last name. <laughs> really fucking, but I just want to beat the rest of the Sundeep's. There can be only one, and Highlander rules. Uh, <laughs> don't, there's this YouTuber that's like crushing it inspirational speaker guy I, I, i'm not i'm not excited about it <laughs> um but i guess i you know what well, yeah this is great this is like the resume values versus the eulogy values question right like you like yep. what do you want you want some deep perique like kind person yeah. father great father like you know like <laughs> that's that's what you really want when the, when the chips uh, all get cashed in um but for now, you know, Sandeep uh, Daisy Quest. Go to DaisyQuest.com. Yeah. <laughs> <There you> are. <laughs> yeah, that is great. It works for me. Nice. All right. Well, well let's see this handstand, and then we will uh, stop recording. <laughs> okay. Ready? Here we go. All right. <laughs> I cannot believe he it. He is really doing it. This is great. I cannot believe it. I, yeah. I didn't. Like he's putting, is he putting he's going to put on? some lights on. There you go. A ceiling fan. Oh. Oh, ceiling fan. Gotcha. Oh, oh <laughs> that's it. nailed it. <laughs> I did. I did not honestly think you were good, but great you did it. But also, your fly was open this <laughs> time. No, no. <laughs> Holy shit, I, <laughs> dude! I think we should make all our guests do something. You know. Yeah, climb the wall, jump out of the window, window, something. That's pretty good. Wall. We, we yeah. never see a hidden talent that gets to be that like that amazing. Like he actually did it. That's I right. Was, I like that. That was great. We should have all of our guests do that. You should send him a special thank you note just for that. Just, just for that. Just for that. <laughs> no, this is great, man. This is great. That was fun. Well, we are so glad you guys watched our episode. Please, please like and subscribe. And if you really, really like it, please share it with your friends, families, and enemies. As always, I'm Mary Picarazzi. And I'm Tammy Rora. <laughs>